Hi book friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Read. Today I'm going to do a bookshelf tour. I always enjoy seeing other people's reading spaces and how they've organized their books. I'm not going to go one by one reading each individual title, but I will pull out some standouts and give you an overall idea of how I organize my books. This is in my uh, living room, so I'll give you a brief look at that. There's some uh, towels that just came out of the dryer that need to be folded and uh, some bubbly water that just was delivered from Amazon that I haven't uh, done anything with. Um, and this is my living room bookshelf. So when I'm sitting here in my living room, this is kind of what I'm looking at. I've got Hedwig and the Hogwarts Express sign there and up here on the top shelf I have well first of all I'm a Giants fan I'm a big baseball fan this is Hunter Pence hi Hunter this was from a um, half marathon Giants half marathon that I did a few years ago book wise up here on this top shelf I have some of my kind of collector's edition versions of books so these are all classics up here so these books here on the left are the Penguin Clothbound Classics Collection, and the one we're looking at here is Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. This is one of my favorite books. I read this three or four years ago, and um, it was fun reading, getting to read it in this um, super fancy edition. This was my first of the Penguin Clothbound Classics, and I think I just ran across this at Barnes & Noble, actually. Then we have the Penguin Black Spines there. Um, let's see, I've got the, uh, the three Theban plays there, um, Oliver Twist, Persuasion, and H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds. And then next door there, we have the English, the Penguin English Library Classics. I read, let's see, for Victober last October, I read Elizabeth Gaskell's Wives and Daughters and absolutely loved it. I read it mostly on audiobook, but I did read some of it in physical form from this edition. Then we have three of the Persephone classic books here. Um, one of them, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. I actually found this at my local half price books. I recognized the spine of it and I uh, was super psyched to pick it up for like six bucks or something. And then on the end here, we have the Steinbeck Centennial Editions. Uh, that is Cannery Row and East of Eden. And then I have the Grapes of Wrath in the other room with the uh, those bookshelves that you normally see me in front of with my American Great Read books. There are also some more of the, um, all of these editions except for the Persephone's um, that are on those other shelves. So this next row are books that are kind of uh, not directly on my TBR, but books that I hope to read in the relative future, like within, within the season that we're currently in. First of all, we have Harry, Ron, and Hermione holding down the fort there. And then on my book of the month here, we have Barbara Kingsolver's Unsheltered, uh, The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Janet Ellis is the author of The Butcher, Butcher's Hook, and it sounds like a super cool read, and that's an awesome cover. A couple other, other standouts here. We have this amazing edition of Barbara Kingsolver's The Poisonwood Bible. This is the um, Harper Perennial Modern Classic Edition. And this beautiful bright orange with the silhouette of the tree and the yellow sun is such a contrast to what I think is otherwise a really drab color, the, uh, the typical color that it has. And we have a couple of uh, Sarah Moss books there. Uh, that I want to get to soon. Song of Achilles uh, by Madeline Miller. That's the author of Circe, which you may have heard of. Um, and then we have Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway. I've never read any Virginia Woolf, so that's probably going to be the first one that I pick up and hopefully sooner than later. This next shelf is my currently reading and my actual TBR, the books that I plan to read in the current month. And here's Stevie, my dog. He wants love and attention. Say hi, Booktube. Hi, Booktube. Say it. Good boy. Shake. Good boy. Bye, friends.
All right, so these are the books that I'm currently reading. Uh, first of all, I have a couple New Yorkers here, New Yorker magazines that uh, I think I'm going to read, and I just haven't. There's a particular, there's a Haruki Murakami, Haruki Murakami uh, short story in here, The Wind Cave. Um, yeah, that probably has been there for a few months. Um, all right, so I'm reading Mark Lawrence's Red Sister, and this is, this is the... Uh, UK edition. I got it from bookdepository.com and as it's just a super cool cover. So we basically have like little girls being trained to fight by nuns and other spiritual disciplines. We have Yukiko Motoya's The Lonesome Bodybuilder. This is a short story collection. Um, I've read I think the first three or four short stories. The next one in here is like 90 pages long. So I'm kind of waiting till I have maybe a nice chunk of time in the afternoon or the evening and I'm just going to plow through that next story. And then I just started last night Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and this one is number 89 in the Great American Read list. Uh, we also have some little friends here. This is my little fox bookend and an owl and I actually don't remember where this owl came from but he's cute. Keep him Mr. Fox company. I have the Sorcerer's Stone and uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter Illustrated Editions, as well as a Funko Pop of my favorite baseball player, Buster Posey. Thank you, Buster. Um, okay, then we have the books that I hope to read. Now, it's February 11th right now. I am not going to get through, finish all of those, and read all of these. It's not going to happen, but these are the books I'll be choosing from, at least, for... Uh, the rest of February. So we have Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. This is in the, in the English Library edition. They all have those individual, individually designed covers. We have Allie Smith's Winter, Toni Morrison's Beloved. This is number 60 on the Great American Read List. Oh, Pride and Prejudice is number four. Shino Achebe's Things Fall Apart, number 82. I really hope, I want to get to Beloved and Things Fall Apart this month as part of, um, as part of Black History Month. I also really hope that I can get to Washington Black by Ezia Adujan. It's like an adventure story involving um, a slave or a, a former slave or an escaped slave, something like that. Uh, I have a nonfiction book here, Deep Work by Cal Newport. And this is, I've heard of this book from kind of like uh, productivity podcast guys. And it's basically about how we can, um, we can get a lot more done if we kind of shut things down and really uh, dig in deep to what we're doing. Um, and so I really need in kind of this modern age of everything being so instantaneous and just dopamine rushes left and right, I really need to work on my focus and concentration skills and my ability to dig deep in, into some deep work. Um, next up we have Tracy Chevalier's Remarkable Creatures as a historical fiction and a gift from my best friend. And then we have the brand spanking new on the come up by is it Angie Thomas. I'm sorry. Yeah. Angie Thomas. I haven't read The Hate You Give. Um, this is her brand new book. This is a book of the month choice for February. And then the beautiful Black, Re Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. It's taking a lot of self-control not to just jump right into this, but especially because I'm reading Red Sister right now, which is a fantasy book. I'm going to wait until I finish Red Sister until I start Black Leopard, Red Wolf. This next shelf is fantasy books that I have not yet read. All right, so another uh, book of the month choice for February. I went with two for February. The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chalksky. Uh, I've just heard a lot of hype about this one, and I wanted to get to it sooner than later. So, um, mm, you just saw my TBR, so we'll see about that. This is A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. Um, I guess, is it is it a Darker Shade of Magic trilogy that this is? So this is the, book, the third book in uh, that series. I read the first book, two books with my husband. Um, I think I'm probably just going to read the third one. Thank you, Stevie. Stevie needs love. Okay, hello, hello. I think I'm probably going to read A Conjuring of Light on my own as we've moved on. My, my husband and I together have moved on to other series. I have The Night Circus so. here by Aaron Morgan, Morgan Stern. I might be the only person who hasn't read this yet, um, but I just heard this morning Jean 
Gene from Gene's Bookish Thoughts just announced, see if I can say it right, Fam Fan Tail? Uh, I think a thon or, or challenge or something like that. Um, and it's about reading fantasy written by women. So The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern uh, will count for that. So I think I might end up reading this in March as part of Fem Fanta Fem Fantal. Fem Fantail? I'm gonna have to work on that. I have yet to read any Brandon Sanderson, but I have so I think I actually have the first book and the last book in the Mistborn novels. At some point, I guess I thought Alloy of Law was the first book, and it's not. Confusingly, Final Empire is actually the first book, and these are the British covers, which look awesome when you see them, um, you know, the whole series on a shelf together. So again, that was purchased from bookdepository.com. Um, oh, we have, these is, this is Harry and Hermione Funko Pop ornaments, and sadly, they did not have Ron. So it's just these guys. I'm going to move them over here for a second. Ah, Harry fell. Get back up. Okay, um, I'm excited for Son of, uh, yeah, Son of Shadows by Juliet Morellier. This is the second book in the, uh, uh, Seven Waters trilogy. So I read Daughter of the Forest in January and absolutely loved it. And then next we have some Lee, Bar Lee Bardugo here. So I had see the bookmark there. I started Six of Crows a bit and I've heard it said that it can stand alone. You don't have to have read the Grisha trilogy first, but I felt like I was missing a lot. And then I had heard someone uh, say that you should read the Grisha trilogy first. So that is this right here. This is a box set um, that I got also probably from Book Depository, but I think I'm going to save this and read these ones with my husband. I think he'll, he'd be into that. And then this is this amazing card that my friend Tammy made for me. That is me as a Gryffindor, of course. And there's a skunk there because when I first bought my house, I did have a bit of a skunk problem. So, oh, it was for Christmas. Happy Christmas, Aaron. And there's a, it almost looks like um, if Pikachu was an owl. Um, and then this is my, actually my niece Holly's edition of uh, Chamber of Secrets. Because it was falling apart and she was over here reading and I let her use my uh, not falling apart edition. See, it's totally falling apart because she was trying to read it and hold the pages together at the same time. So we'll trade when she finishes. Okay, the last shelf here is like um, thriller, crime thriller, ah, Stephen King, sci-fi, um, kind of a mix of things. Um, and these are of not yet read books. So, so first we're going to have to move Lucy, the Giants fan, out of the way here. So Lucy, keep Harry and Hermione company up there. All right, so I've got a couple Karen Slaughters. Um, you know what? Actually, I have read pieces of her. Um, that's the only Karen Slaughter I've read. Um, this one, Alice Isn't Dead, is like a crime thriller. And I found this at... Uh, I saw this on an end cap at my half price book books and it's a signed first edition and it was a really cool naked hardback and uh, I liked the blurb so I'll get to that eventually. As far as my Stephen King's go I have Under the Dome, The Long Walk and Christine here. Now The Long Walk I was actually just talking uh, to my brother-in-law about this earlier today. So this is one that he was originally published under his pen name Richard Bachman. And I read this when I was probably around 18. Uh, I recently replaced the old mass market edition I had um, with this nicer one. Uh, I really want to reread this soon. Um, if you like, uh, if you like The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, if you like Battle Royale or The Hunger Games, uh, this is kind of among that vein. Particularly like The Lottery, where you have basically a horrible tradition that is continued on uh, merely for the sake of it being a tradition at this point. So um, it's been a really long time since I've read this one, so I would like to give that one a reread. Speaking of Shirley Jackson, I have the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition here of We Have Always Lived in a Castle. I intended to read this one last October and didn't get around to it, so I might end up saving it for next October, but I do love Shirley Jackson's The Lottery is absolutely my favorite short story ever and probably the most 
the single piece of literature I remember the most from high school. All right, so then we have some, uh, some Thriller and A Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware and Sharp Objects and Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. And then we move into more of the sci-fi realm. So we have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I'd started to listen to this on audiobook several months ago, and I could tell I was really going to enjoy the book, but the audiobook wasn't, just wasn't working for me. So I picked this up in a physical form and, of course, haven't got around to it. And a couple science fiction masterworks editions here, Philip K. Dick and Arthur C. Clarke. Get into those science fiction uh, classics. And then we have Flowers for Algernon, which I've heard amazing things about, even from people who don't uh, like, like science fiction. And apparently this is supposed to break your heart. So I don't know if I'm in the mood for a broken heart right now. This piece right here was an old uh, mailbox that my grandpa, my great grandpa, either converted or had converted um, from an old lockbox and made it into uh, just like a little safe. So it's solid all the way around. Um, that would be like the post office box number, and then you put the, the letters or the you do the combination there. And then you can slip coins or whatever in there. And it says, created from original post office lock boxes. So that's a pretty cool little piece. And I think it looks like an owl. It's like the eyes and the nose. The nose is actually an eagle. And then I have Game of Thrones seasons one through seven on Blu-ray. So that is all for this shelf as we pan up here. So when I sit in my living room, this is what I look at and I just... Mm, I love looking at my books. I think it's interesting to know like uh, how people read, where people read. So I'm going to give you a few shots while we're still in the living room of where I do most of my reading. So this is a couch. This is my couch. I have the Golden Gate Bridge right there. So I'll either lie along here with the dog usually curled up with me. He wants to play fetch. Or I'll sit over here by this lamp uh, and read. And then my other big place that I read, excuse Stevie's toys, is in this chair here. I call this my Frasier chair. Uh, if you know Frasier, the, uh, the old sitcom, this is a replica of an Eames chair and it's quite comfy for reading. And then I have these nice lights right over here. So it gives me some good reading light. And now for something completely different. This is my nonfiction and theology sh shelf. I won't go into too much detail over here, but just give you a good idea of the variety of the books that I read and that I have in my home. So I don't have like super rhyme or reason for any of this. Uh, on the very top there, that's a cool Grey's Anatomy edition. And that uh, bouquet up there was from our wedding. We did a very on the cheap Hawaiian style wedding at a local lake and we used fake, fake flowers for the bouquet. Um, I have a systematic theology up there, several Bibles, including this, um, this is actually really cool. This is a Bible set that has no chapters and verses. So you read it um, a little bit more like a novel style and it, the context can help a lot better. So this is um, by Crossway and it's broken up. So this is the Gospel and Acts. You have uh, the Pentateuch, the historical books, poetry, the prophets, and then the epistles and revelation. So just to give you an idea, let me open this up for you so you can see. So it'll start. So it'll start with, you know, the heading, the gospel according to Matthew. And then it just goes right into it. So you have the, the color blocking there for the first letter, but you don't have chapter one, verse one and you just read it like you would a novel. So when you're really reading for context and understanding, this is a really great way to read. And I find that when I read in this edition of the Bible, I tend to read more at one time because you don't have those arbitrary uh, chapter breaks to kind of make you feel accomplished. Um, uh, this little surfer guy thing, Sam, my husband, got to go to New Zealand and Australia when he was in high school, and he picked up that little, I guess he's like an Aborigine surfer, so that's pretty cool. And then this, um, I honestly don't know what this is, <laughs> lamp, pitcher, I'm not sure. 
he got that uh, in Iraq. Next up is the nonfiction shelf. Um, we have Jen Campbell's The Bookshop Book here, which is which is signed to me with love from Jen Campbell, so that's awesome. One of my favorite books of last year, Tara Westover is Educated. You probably recognize this guy, Becoming by Michelle Obama. I haven't started this yet. I have it on hold from the, the audiobook. The audiobook on hold from the library. Um, but it's probably going to be like three years till it gets around to me. So I probably will end up reading that physical edition. So I have quite a variety. We have some um, like historical American stuff. We have Hunter Thompson, uh, Phil Clay's Redeployment. This is a... Um, this one at the National Book Award. I think I heard him on NPR, and I ended up pick, picking this book. And he talks about um, it's you know life in the war, kind of uh, kind of stuff. Um, I really love David Sedaris. I was probably one of the first audiobooks I ever listened to was David Sedaris books. Uh, oh, a good standout from last year was Yonmi Park's In Order to Live, uh, talking about escaping North Korea. Um, and let's see, one I, so this is a combination also of books I have and have not read. And then one I really want to get to soon is Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. Oh, and the organization of this nonfiction shelf, shelf makes absolutely no sense. This is just in size order. Other than the bookshop book there on the end, sorry about the weird lighting right here, but, um, it's just tallest to shortest. We have Hunter Thompson right here in a hardback, and then we have more Hunter Thompson over here. Um, actually, Yonmi Park is in between two Hunter Thompsons because they don't, uh, they don't, they aren't the same size. So next, again, this doesn't really make any sense, but this is just kind of what this shelf turned out to be. This is more um, theology. Um, so one of the best books, uh, if you're a Christian um, and you want to know more about God, J.I. Packer's Knowing God. Ooh, there's terrible glare on that, but... This is an amazing book, and I feel like I could read this, finish it, start right back over from the beginning, and get as much or more of it the second time around. Another one, I have three copies right here of Valley of Vision, because these two right here are still in plastic wrap. This is my edition, the leather edition. There's a paperback as well. It's a really great gift, and that's why I have these two over here. And this is a collection of um, prayers written by the Puritans and... Um, they're just amazing. You read these prayers and you just wish that you could, you could pray anything quite as nice as that. Uh, Jenga. Everybody needs Jenga. Here's a picture of my husband from our wedding, on our wedding day. And then this is the dust jacket to, um, a commentary on the gospel according to John by R.C. Sproul. That's just the dust jacket because the book, I'm reading the book is in, a, in another room. And then, uh, everybody needs... Uh, an ammo can of blank cartridges, right?